Alright folks, in this video we are going to discuss orthonormal matrices and show just how powerful they are by doing some benchmarking, solving random linear systems and linear systems that contain an orthonormal matrix to show that the linear system with the orthonormal matrix is solved faster. And we'll also discuss why that's the case. Any of the code shown in this video can be found at the GitHub link in the description. To go along with that, some of you requested Jupyter Notebooks with some added notes added in for these videos, so you can find that as well if you want some more in-depth written out notes and videos aren't necessarily your thing. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns throughout the process of this video, don't hesitate to let me know, but without further ado, folks, let's begin. Alrighty, so orthonormal matrices are basically just an orthonormal set of vectors that's organized into the columns of a matrix. So from here on out, if you see me use this capital Q notation, know that I'm referring to an orthonormal matrix. And the awesome thing about this is that the orthonormal matrix columns keep the same relationship as the vectors in our orthonormal set of vectors. So first, the inner product of all the columns with one another is zero. And also, each column is normalized so that the two norm is equivalent to one. And we can produce an orthonormal matrix using the Gram-Schmidt process we talked about before. You can go back to that if you need a refresher. But there are a handful of other ways to produce orthonormal matrices. However, for now, we're just going to stick with the Gram-Schmidt process that's going to accept some A matrix and return our orthonormal matrix. Now to show the power and utility that orthonormal matrices provide, we're going to do some benchmarking solving linear systems. We're going to start with a 100 by 100 dimension linear system. We're just going to randomly generate it with values between 0 and 255, and we're going to increment our way up to 1000 by 1000 uh, dimension linear system. And along the way with that, we're going to be plugging in our A matrices into the Gram-Schmidt process, which will produce an orthonormal matrix and so we'll have 100 by 100 uh, random linear systems generated and then 100 by 100 uh, linear systems containing an orthonormal matrix generated and we're going to record the run times to solve these systems using the uh, numpy linalg solve function just to use a generic function to so that you know that we're not doing anything uh, really special or out of the ordinary here this is the actual code that we're going to use, and I'm going to just very briefly uh, and quickly go through this. And I just want to point out here that we are just using the NumPy linalg solve function, like I said from before, which is doing a whole heck of a lot on the back end to make sure that we get the best performance possible. And uh, hint, hint, uh, wink, wink, there is some matrix decompositions being performed using orthonormal matrices. That's why this kind of works out, which we'll touch on that after we go through the benchmarking. But uh, also note, we're using the nanosecond perf counter in Python. We are converting all of those times to milliseconds, and we're recording those times to solve each system, both the system containing the randomly generated A matrix and then also the one containing the orthonormal matrix. And then note here in the plotting that we are plotting our dimensions compared to the runtime. And that runtime is again in milliseconds. And that y axis is on a logarithmic time scale. So, quickly over in the Jupyter Notebook, uh, you can see we're doing a simpler version of this benchmarking. It's a 3 by 3 system. We're only generating values between 0 and 10. And you can see we're still we're using the nanosecond perf counter to do all this. We're converting over to milliseconds. This is just a, a, a quicker, uh, more, more smaller version of the benchmarking that we're going to do right here. You can see already running this once that the, ran the time it takes to solve the random uh, system AX equals B is uh, significantly slower than using the orthonormal matrix. We can run this a few more times though. So you can see running it again, the orthonormal matrix time is significantly faster. Again, running it a third time, uh, you can see it's still much, much faster. All right, so uh, I ran this benchmarking a number of different times, and I will note that if you run this in the Jupyter Notebook or using the benchmark.py file, 
uh, on your own. It will take a little bit of time, so do be patient. And we do still have a little bit of jaggedness going on right here. And that's just something I couldn't get cleared up with my virtual machine. So we're just going to ignore this outlier point right here but generally speaking you can see that as we scale up the dimensions of our matrix our linear system containing the orthonormal matrix is solved significantly faster at the smaller dimensions but then even as we work our way out to the higher dimensions our linear system containing the orthonormal matrix is consistently uh, being solved faster than our ax equals b system now running this a few more times, this is about the smoothest result that I could end up getting, so we're going to ignore these points right here just because there's something weird going on and my virtual machine is acting up. So we see the same trend where our QX equals B system is solved significantly faster at the smaller dimensions, and even as we scale, uh, it is still being solved faster than AX equals B with the exception of this one outlier right here. Between this first run, and this second run, our QX equals B system is being solved significantly faster. But why exactly is that the case? To answer why that's the case, let's consider a linear system AX equals B. And let's not think about anything numerically or computationally. I'll ask you this question. What is the simplest and easiest way to solve this linear system analytically on a whiteboard? Actually, let's make a parallel outside of the realm of linear algebra, just a simple equation AX equals B. How can we solve this simply and easily on the whiteboard? Well, we can end up dividing both sides by A to get uh, 1X is equal to B divided by A or A inverse B. And I'm purposely leaving this one out in front here uh, to, to kind of be explicit with all of you. But in reality, we don't need this line. X is just equal to A inverse B or B divided by A. That would be the simplest way to solve that analytically. That doesn't change at all with analytically solving this linear system. We would just left multiply both sides by A inverse, which should give us the identity matrix times X is equal to A inverse B. So when we go ahead and write it out like this, what we're really saying is that our X vector is equal to A inverse B. Now again, we don't really need these two lines here. I only include these lines to be very explicit and redundant. But hopefully, you know by now that solving a linear system like this is not as simple and as straightforward computationally or numerically because computing inverses is something that's pretty tricky. That's why we have matrix decompositions and Gaussian elimination that we have to perform. But that changes with orthonormal matrices, and that's because of this identity right here. If we have an orthonormal matrix and we compute Q transpose by Q or Q by Q transpose, we end up getting the identity matrix out. We saw this before when we talked a little bit more in depth about Gram-Schmidt, but what does this imply to us? Well, this implies that Q transpose is equal to Q inverse. If we go through and try to solve the same linear system, except now we recognize we have an orthonormal matrix in this system, well, things are pretty much exactly the same from an analytical standpoint. We left to multiply both sides by Q transpose, which is really just equivalent to Q inverse, which gives us the identity matrix. So uh, we arrive at the same conclusion that our X vector is equal to Q inverse B or really Q transpose B. But this changes pretty significantly on the numerical and computational side of stuff because now solving this linear system containing an orthonormal matrix is just as simple or almost just as simple as solving it analytically. All we need to do is transpose the matrix of our system and then do matrix multiplication. There's no more need for matrix decompositions or Gaussian elimination. It's just a simple transpose and then matrix multiplication. And that is one of the key advantages that orthonormal matrices provide. By being able to recognize this relationship between the columns of our matrix, we're able to go ahead and leverage this bit of information to do a lot of powerful things, not just solve linear systems faster. If there's one thing to take away from this, orthonormal matrices are very powerful, and we've just scratched the surface as to how powerful they actually are. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to let me know. But I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will hope to see you again next time.